Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to the course Nutrition for the Family. This is the seventh module in which we are studying about the nutrition care for the children. And this is the fourth and last lecture of this module in which we shall be studying about nutritional care and nutritional problems associated with the school going children. In the previous lecture, we had studied about the changes in the physical growth, in the body composition, and socio-psychological changes during the childhood and we studied about the nutritional requirements of macronutrients and micronutrients and food requirements and the feeding pattern of the school going children that is six to nine years of the age in this lecture we shall be studying about the components of meal for a school going child and then we will study about the factors to be considered while planning and preparing diets for the school going children and then we will also study about the diet related problems of school children among all the components of the meal pattern breakfast is considered the neglected meal with the need to adjust to the school time the first meal after the long night break is omitted entirely by many of the children it is a hazard from the nutritional point of view because there could be many reasons why the child is neglecting this meal the meal maybe it is not ready in the time and so the child has to go to school and then the child may not get up in time so therefore the breakfast may be taken in a hurry not fully taken and if the child is neglecting this meal his ability to attend the classes for learning his lessons and mastering the different concept it can be uh, affected so a good breakfast should include uh, some cereals or cereal dal preparation uh, the baby or the child he can take milk and fruit and even the boiled eggs and nuts along with the milk it is a good idea if the child is in hurry packed lunches they have become necessity for the school going children as the school lunch period is too short for the children to go back and have homemade food so the packed lunch it is a lunch that is packed in a tiffin box which is to be eaten by the child while he is away from the home and usually it is not adequate both in the quantity and the quality so that is why a lot of focus should be uh, given to this packed lunch uh, as the taking lunch uh, from the home needs it uh, needs little effort but it is good for maintenance of the health of the child it needs considerable planning and management so that the baby or the child he is well fed and uh, carrying uh, the home made food it is uh, less expensive it is more convenient it is more hygienic and it is again uh, able to achieve the nutritional requirement of the child the tiffin should be providing one third of daily requirements of the calories protein and other nutrients of the child and it should be able to boost the concentration and energy for the rest of the school day preferably the pack lunch should consist of all five food groups though the number of dishes may be less and uh, it is good idea to include one serving of green leafy vegetables it will take care of uh, one third requirement of many vitamins and minerals and uh, some amount of good quality protein like milk and milk products like curd and paneer it would improve the vegetable protein also so for the combination of vegetable protein uh, that is cereal and pulses they can be given 
so that the protein quality is improved and addition of egg it would improve the quality of protein beside meeting many protective nutritional needs of the child and to make the food appetizing whole fruit or buttermilk in a bottle or crispies in airtight bag can also be given there are some points which we should remember uh, to make the lunch enjoyable for the child so let us see what are these important points which are to be considered uh, the first thing is to avoid the monotony when um, it should be taken into consideration and we should see what the child has taken in the breakfast so the packed lunch it should contain something different so we should add variety and the food should have correct consistency also because if we are packing something too thin say thin dal or something like that it will leak in uh, through the uh, tiffin and it may spoil the bag of the child so the child will not uh, like that thing and uh, the dry food it may not be appetizing to the child and along with that the chapatis they should be wrapped in a cloth to retain the moisture and similarly if we are sending uh, curd rice it should be made with the cold rice for making it appealing to the child and uh, it is a good idea if we include some fresh vegetables or fruits and they will help in moistening the mouth of the child and uh, we should pack the vegetable or the fruit slices in the plastic bag or any kind of airtight uh, bag Uh, to retain the fresh flavor and the texture we can always sprinkle uh, some lemon over it so that it doesn't change the color it is good idea to pack the food preparations which taste good even when they are cold uh, for example uh, if we are packing dosa in a lunch box it will never taste good like uh, we always like it crispier and hot and uh, it is important to cool the preparation before packing otherwise uh, we could uh, get it spoiled by the time the child uh, is eating it is ready to eat that and non perishable items they should be included in the lunch box such as dry fruits nuts chickies or the homemade bars they can be given uh, so that the child he can uh, eat them in a jiffy also and the different items they should be packed separately or the tiffin box with the compartment should be used and uh, pack only as much the child can eat happily so the children they learn to value the food and they do not waste it if we are going to pack too much of food uh, naturally the child is uh, unable to eat that much and this will cause lot of food wastage and this will spoil the habit also and the containers uh, they should be cleaned and dried immediately after the child is returning from the school so that we are able to maintain the hygiene of the tiffin box many a times what happens that we are packing good food but the child is bringing back the whole tiffin so that is very discouraging so let us see what are the suggestions to encourage the child to eat when he is away from home the first important thing is to involve the child in planning preparing uh, for the packing of the lunch box so the child will feel responsible for the, his own choice and he will take care of his lunch tiffin and uh, it is good idea to make the lunch simple as most children they eat lunch quickly so that they can spend more time with the socializing or playing with their friends and it is uh, important to send easy to open packages of fruits and vegetable rolls or uh, we can make chapati rolls or we can always provide stuffed sandwiches so that the child can take them nicely and uh, we should send the portions which can be completed during the break otherwise the child will not be able to finish his tiffin in time these children they may need mid morning and a mid afternoon snack also we can always include uh, fruits roasted legumes boiled uh, legume chaat chila or soups uh, for meeting the heightened requirement of various nutrients and uh, if we are choosing the snacks well we can always provide important nutrients to these children 
and if the children they buy candy peppermints or the soft drinks ice fruit they may get uh, mainly calories from these foods only and these foods they reduce or dull the appetite also without meeting the body's need so these foods they are said to provide only empty calories so uh, in between uh, meal snacks they are very important components of the meal just like breakfast uh, packed lunch and uh, snacks family meals that is uh, most likely the dinner uh, they are considered to be the foundation of healthful food choices for these children now this is because at lunch time or the dinner time the high quality of food is served and along with that there are family conversations also uh, which helps the child to opt for healthy food choices and uh, it will also be helpful in controlling the extra calories by overeating and so uh, it will be helpful in controlling weight of all the family members including the children and it creates a relaxed atmosphere and the members they are receptive to the suggestions regarding the food choices also and uh, during the family dinner time the tv should be switched off so that the members they can concentrate on the food and the conversation this will improve the dietary pattern of not only children but also adults who are supposed to be the role models for the children another advantages are that the ch uh, children they learn not to waste the food and clean up the place and eating uh, neatly now let's study about the dietary guidelines to meet the nutritional needs of school going children the nutritional requirements they should be met for increased activity for the growth and additional requirements for the sickness and the injury during this age groups so every meal should include five food groups including the lunch which is taken at school and the growing children they should drink two to three Uh, glasses of milk or equivalent milk products such as a curd or paneer if the child doesn't like uh, green leafy vegetables or the salads it can be incorporated uh, in the sandwiches in or it can be stuffed in the chapati or we can make dough uh, with the puree of say spinach palak so uh, we can always include uh, healthy ingredients in the diet by little alterations and uh, since the child goes to school he eats one meal away from the home which is a major change at this stage of the childhood so it requires considerable planning and management to ensure that the child is well fed when he eats away from home and uh, easy to carry easy to handle snacks or lunch it will minimize the temptation of trying foods uh, from the tuck shop or from the nearby uh, fast food shops which we, uh, which are only going to provide the empty calories and variety in terms of color texture and flavor it is necessary uh, so the menu of the packed lunch should be changed frequently along with that the snack and food eaten on returning from the school it also makes positive or the negative impact on the diet of the child so fruits nuts dry fruits sprouts boiled legumes they can be served as snack to the children and the evening meal plan for the child must take into consideration what type of lunch he has had and at the same time it should not be very heavy as it will take away the appetite for the dinner so along with that uh, uh, climatic and weather conditions they are also important considerations in hot weather extra liquids or the salts they should be given to the children because they uh, they do not um, uh, like to drink the plain water so uh, we can give them lemonade or aam panna can be given or jaljeera or similar beverages they can be given to quench their thirst along with providing some salts and nutrients children they get bored very easily so the menu should have variety of color texture and taste a good flavor and new food it should be introduced from time to time so that the uh, child is able to accept the newer foods with a positive frame of mind and uh, 
children as we know they are usually restless and they wish not to spend uh, time on table so they feel rushed in the morning to reach the school time so the menu should provide the dishes that are quick to eat and yet they are satisfying nutritionally though the likes and dislikes of the child it should be kept in mind to some extent but it doesn't mean that we should exclude a particular food group because the child is not liking we can always uh, change the form of that food for example if the child is not liking milk in its original form we can change it by adding the bon vita or the chocolate as it will change the color and the taste of milk similarly the food which we are uh, uh, serving to the child it should not be very spicy or highly fried we should provide small little spices and so that uh, the child is able to appreciate the real taste of the food and the meal time should be pleasant and relaxing and this is not a time for the discipline so fixed meal timings they should be encouraged so that a child remembers uh, to eat all his meals the young school going children they should be encouraged to eat with the rest of the family as they will be ready to take the family meals and uh, the interaction which happens during the uh, uh, food time it is very very important for the normal development of healthier food choices and the child should develop the liking for the home food therefore intake of processed food it should be discouraged so the foundation for healthier food choices has to be set in the early childhood only planning and preparation of the meals it should not exceed the planned food budget so cheaper yet nutritious food items they can be selected for example parched grains ground nuts sprouted grains green leafy vegetable etc which are in the season they can be utilized to meet the nutritional requirements of all the family members including these children and seasonal vegetables and fruits they should be included in the diet uh, because they will be available uh, in abundance they will be cheaper they will be nutritious and they will taste best as they are grown in season there are certain tips to make children go for healthier food choices for example the parents they have to be role models because the children they are going to follow their parents so whatever they are eating whatever foods they are choosing the child is going to follow them and uh, the parents they should uh, make them plant vegetables or fruit trees at home at in pots so the child he will really enjoy the food which he has grown himself and uh, it is good idea to take them to the farmers or the vegetable markets when we are going to buy the fresh food items and uh, we should allow them to plan menu with the help of food guide pyramid or healthy plate and uh, we should encourage them to prepare simple recipes on their own and uh, pre portioning of the food it helps in controlling the portion and it prevents the over eating or the under eating by these children and uh, the parents or the caregiver they should appreciate the child when he makes healthy choices and nutritious healthy ready to eat snacks they can be stocked at home uh, because when they see some good snack at home they will grab on that but if unhealthy food items they are lying at the home definitely the child is going to eat that thing only we have just studied about the dietary requirements and we, we have also studied about various methods to improve the eating pattern of school going children let us focus on dietary related problems of this age group many school children they choose faulty foods when their lives they are growing stressful because of heightened uh, expectations from the school from the parents with the increasing competition and uh, expectations regarding their performance so they eat less fruits and vegetables and they start skipping the breakfast to meet their targets so this practice can be consistently harmful to these children as they tend to lose on the healthy food items 
as the if they are choosing some junk food item over uh, the healthy food item to fill up their tummy so uh, such type of food items they are rich in fat salt sugar and it will fill up the tummy and it will suppress the hunger of that child so the right education it is needed to help them in selecting the healthy food such as milk or eggs carrots green leafy vegetables fruits whole grains and unrefined cereals and along with that going for healthy snacking in case they are feeling stressed out many school children they consume inadequate diet so they get malnourished and this malnutrition can be due to poverty because the parents they are not able to provide the nutritious food to their children and sometimes the ignorance on the part of parents to know the requirement of the children it can also lead to malnutrition so when the child is he is in hurry to go to school he may miss breakfast as we have just discussed so he may not carry a proper lunch also to the school and then he will be, he will be too tired after school activities and he will sleep off without taking proper night meal and he will skip the meals therefore so emotional disturbances at school due to poor academic performance or problems with the siblings at home it can reflect in the consumption of food by these children and this can cause underweight and uh, there are certain psychological factors which contribute to the depression or if we see that the child is not motivated enough to eat we should identify such symptoms and uh, the child's likes and dislikes they are also to be considered while uh, preparing and planning the meal for the child and many studies they have found that the diets of the school going children they are deficient in energy protein vitamin a and iron so uh, in india we have icds program and the midday meal program which is aiming to provide one third of calories and protein requirements during the school time only arfid that is avoidance restrictive food intake disorder children being a picky eater that is not very uncommon we uh, we always see that children they have their own uh, choices of the food but prevalence of eating disorders they are also found in this age group so lack of interest in eating it can significantly impact the child growth and development as the child fails to meet the nutritional requirement and ultimately the child will become unhealthy if the child is taking less quantity of food it can lead to constipation and uh, early morning hours they are hours of hurry so the child has to rush to the school and along with that lack of sleep and uh, lack of activity it can also lead to constipation and the children as we know they do not like to eat uh, vegetables and fruits particularly the green leafy vegetables and they do not drink enough water also so the parents they should encourage the children to eat different type of vegetables of whole fruits grains and uh, uh, they should also drink enough fluids so that constipation can be avoided over consumption of sweet and uh, sticky sweets they can result in dental caries and uh, brushing of the teeth before uh, going to the bed and after meal it should become a habit for these children and they should be encouraged to eat the hard food items like carrots and cucumbers and they should avoid the processed high sugary food items such as cola or the high sugar beverages or candies or any sweets which are containing more than normal amount of sugar urbanization increased income availability of the fast food and high heightened educational demands where the child is sitting all the time and increased television viewing or the computer or the screen time it has led to rise in consumption of foods which are high in fat sugar salt and along with low physical activity 
this low physical activity and excess energy intake and this whole changed dietary pattern which is high in fat and low in fiber it can increase the chances of developing overweight and obesity among all the age groups especially these children so most of these children they develop early puberty they get joint pains and they find it difficult to exercise and uh, this in turn will result in metabolic syndrome and it can lead to many other lifestyle diseases so childhood it is an important time to establish both healthy eating pattern and physical activity habits parental obesity are certain psychological factors um, and the child's body type right at the type of birth there are some other factors which can lead to obesity and overweight amongst these children and it can be prevented by avoiding forced feeding by the parents and it is important not to instill in the child's mind that all the food which ever is lying in the platter it should be finished by the child and similarly the psychological stress at home or stress at school it should be addressed with and uh, the junk food should be avoided and eating in front of tv or the computer should be reduced and skipping of the breakfast should not be allowed and food should not be used as a reward so that the child is able to maintain good eating habits there is a strong relationship between the infection and the malnutrition among the children as they can cause a uh, a significant childhood morbidity and mortality also so infections they can be prevented by practicing good hygienic practices and by developing immunity in the children that a child needs to eat more during and after episodes of infection to maintain good nutritional status so the parents they should not withhold the nutritious food when the child is sick micronutrient deficiencies we also call it hidden hunger it is seen in children who are picky eaters and their diet is lacking in the diversity so they are choosing food from one food group or very limited food items and they it happens to some children where the parents they cannot afford to provide milk and milk products or vegetable fruits or eggs or nuts or they are ignorant or they cannot give the sufficient time to the child maybe both of the parents they are working and they cannot groom the child to go for healthier food choices and choosing a, a lots and variety of food items so uh, it is good idea to choose seasonal local low cost and fr fresh food items to ensure that the child is getting sufficient amount of vitamins and minerals to meet his nutritional needs at the same time uh, the due focus should be given to reduction of empty calories uh, by which are uh, the food items containing high salt high sugar and they also contain trans fats also let's summarize what we have studied regarding the nutrition care during the school going years we studied in the previous lecture regarding the changes in the physical growth then changes in the body composition then socio psychological changes and along with that we studied about the nutritional requirements in which we studied what are the macronutrient requirements that is energy protein fat and carbohydrate requirements of school going children and then we focused on the micronutrients in which we studied about the recommended dietary allowance for minerals and vitamins and then we studied about the food requirements of school going children and we also studied about the feeding pattern of the school going children how they are going to choose their diets when they are away or when they are with the family and in this lecture we studied about the components of the meal for the school going child in which we studied about the breakfast its importance and how to ensure that the child takes breakfast then we studied about the lunch and the uh, tiffin and its composition 
and how to help the child to finish his tiffin when he is away to school. Then we studied about the snacks, its importance and about the family time that is the dinner time and what is the role of the parents to ensure that the child is taking proper food. Then we studied about the factors to be considered while planning and preparing diets for the school going children. We also studied about the diet related problems of the children in which we studied about the overweight obesity, underweight, malnourishment, teething problems that is dental issues and other behavioral problems which impact the nutritional status of these children. This finishes our seventh module that is nutritional care during childhood. In this module, we have studied about the preschool children and the school going children. We have studied about the growth and development that happens during this phase and how it affects their nutritional status and the food choices. We studied about the nutritional requirements, about the recommended dietary allowance, about the dietary guidelines to meet these nutritional requirements and we also studied about the diet related problems of the preschoolers and the school going children. This finishes our seventh module. Thank you very much.